video, we're going to be taking our postcard into Adobe Photoshop for the first time. Uh, we're going to be setting up a new file in there, and we need a lot of research done before we get here. So, uh, the minimum of what you need will be a textured background plus a uh, landscape photo from your chosen location to serve uh, superimposed with the texture, or the texture will be superimposed over top of that. Um, going forward, you will need a landscape or building or essential feature photo, uh, one for every letter. So Hyrule has what? One, two, three, four, five, six. I will eventually need six for today. I only need one, and so do you. So this is the one that I'll be posting in my background. It is a um, big old screenshot here from Breath of the Wild. Um, as far as the vintage postcard textures go, these will be uploaded to Schoology and you'll be able to download both of them, but there are two different folders, blank postcards and handwritten. Uh, under blank postcard, they just have a bunch of texture, but nothing is really on them. I'm going to open up one just to kind of show you what I mean. Um, I've gone with 15. I have a copy saved over here, which is just more standard issue. Um, but if you really want to go wild, you can go into these handwritten ones as well. And sometimes superimposing a photo or superimposing them over a photo can look really neat. Other times it can be a little bit of a hassle. But if you want to be bold and play around with one of these, I definitely encourage taking a look at it. Um, safe bets are under this blank postcard one here. So just want to highlight those for you as you guys uh, download and take a look at those before we really deep dive this. All right, what we need to do is open up Photoshop. So go ahead and do that right now. Hopefully you have it pinned to your taskbar. If not, I can individually help you find it and do that as well. I did not have it open already in the making of the video. I apologize, so we will have to wait just a little bit before we get going. Um, some different things with creating this file, um, and depending on how the year is going, this may or may not be our first time using Photoshop. So um, if we do some things this way, don't think that we're always going to do them this way. All right, when Photoshop opens, you'll be looking at something like this, very similar to how Illustrator looks. Uh, it'll show recent files down here, um, some other like different like general things in the app, and yada, yada. What we want to do, though, is just create a new file. You could click Create New right here, but the standard or the old way that I'm used to is File New up top right here. So go ahead and create a new file. Um, uh, unlike uh, Illustrator, there will be, uh, it should come as pixels as default. I think Illustrator is inches by default. Um, there's a whole bunch of different like recent stuff over here and all these different file types and settings. We don't need to worry about that, just like Illustrator right over here. Now, the file name, you're gonna actually name it the same thing that you did the Illustrator one. The reason is, is that the suffix of the file, instead of .ai for Adobe Illustrator, will be .psd for Photoshop document. So, first name, last name, postcard is what you want right there under the uh, file name. Uh, instead of pixels, we want inches. That'll help print in a much more accurate fashion. The width, we want to be seven. And the height, we want to be five. Just like our Illustrator file, this will help us keep everything in scale. Orientation, make sure that you click that landscape one, the long one, just to make sure that that's correct. Resolution, there was a pixels per inch in Illustrator PPI set to 300. Resolution is essentially the same thing. You can see right here, pixels slash inch. 72 is the default. However, you should only use 72 if you're making something for like a website where you're never intending to print it. Uh, the quality is not as good when it prints at 72, which is like default. For printing purposes, standard printing purposes, a 300 resolution is uh, pretty uh, par for the course. It'll go up more depending on if you're doing like really large, like billboard large stuff, but you should really be using Illustrator anyway for that. Um, last but not least, this is actually really important because features will not work if you've not done this, is the color mode. Um, normally, like 99.9% .9 of the time, I will always like scream and shout CMYK. Um, however, for this time, we need RGB. We need that RGB lifestyle for this one. Certain filter effects will not work in CMYK, so we have to go RGB. Now, 
the colors will be ever so slightly different when we print because CMYK are printer colors, RGB are screen colors, but we need those effects. So it is what it is. All right, after you have all these settings right here, go ahead and hit create. Should end up with a white rectangle that looks kind of like your um, Illustrator file. Let me do some things here real quick, just because I think this might be our first time using it. Uh, you don't need to worry about what I'm doing. Well, actually, I'll go over this anyway, I guess. Under Window, there's Workspace, and you'll see Reset Essentials. Well, Essentials should be chosen up here by default. Um, if anything ever goes haywire with your UI, maybe you hit some wrong hotkeys or something like that and your, your user interface gets really messed up, I'm always gonna come over to your computer and do Window Workspace Reset Essentials. This brings it back to standard issue, what Adobe gives you um, for the UI. The one I don't like having, in all honesty, is this Properties tab with Properties Adjustments and Libraries. So I go over here to this little um, toolbar, the slashes, click on that, and then I do close tab group. I would recommend you do this as well. This way you can see a lot more layers at the same time. This You're gonna see this project has a lot of layers. So having this be as large as it is is really, really nice. All right, let's move on now. Uh, now that we have our file set up and the UI set up, you'll see there are different changes in Illustrator, but you'll learn them more as we go. That way I won't waste time and keep speaking. Um, what I recommend that you do is on the top, like where it says Adobe Photoshop 2021, click drag and just move that over just a little bit as uh, hopefully that we all have our images saved to our desktop, just like I do where you have them down the right side like this. The reason why this is so nice is you can click and drag them into this file. Watch this. I'm going to take this textured one first, 15 copy, whatever your yours might be 15 or whatever number you chose. I click and I drag it into the white canvas, literally leaving it over the white canvas, and then I let go. I think my Photoshop is lagging. Yeah, yeah it is. Um, it might have taken too long to do that. Sometimes it tries to like post-process things. There we go. It's coming in. Come on, computer. All right, there we go. Yours will probably be way faster than that. Um, so now the photo is in. I can shimmy this back over if I want to, and I want to enlarge this to make it the whole thing. In Illustrator, this is where it's going to get really confusing, and I low-key hate this. In Illustrator, you have to hold Shift when you scale something. In Photoshop nowadays, if you hold Shift, it free transforms, and it doesn't keep it in scale. So you actually, uh, let me undo that. Oh, no. Oh, great. Well, I got to import it again. Click, drag, drop into the white space. wonder why... There we go. I'm not sure what was going on there. Um, anywho, don't hold shift in Photoshop when scaling. I, I know that's backwards and confusing, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Now, the image might not fit perfectly, which it shouldn't. We want it to actually stretch the whole, um, the whole image, so you won't get those edges. We'll do that when we print it. So stretch your image so that the texture fits the entire page, and then you can hit the enter or return key on your keyboard. Um, if this did not come up, oh yeah, I probably wouldn't by default. When you move the image in, let me go back in my history here. Let's do this all again. Hopefully I'll edit the video later to get this out. When you move your image in, if this does not come up by default, mine did, um, you always can take the selection tool or the move tool in Photoshop up here in the top and do the same thing. But I want everybody right now to select the move tool because I'm gonna show you something that I recommend always having selected, and that is transform controls. After you select the move tool up here in the top, you're gonna see some things change up here. Right where I'm circling right now, you're seeing show transform controls. Check that box right there because this gives you that bounding box in which you can um, not only move objects, you can scale them. This kind of stops you from having to use this like free transform bit. I, I prefer this. I'll show you the other way individually. But anywho, um, same thing I was saying before. Stretch your image out. Make sure that it goes outside the canvas, leaving no empty space, and then hit enter. All right. 
Um, now we are going to get our landscape photo and uh, we'll be doing this with this as well. So move Photoshop over again, find your file type, whatever it may be, um, that you want for your background landscape and click and drag this into the canvas as well. Um, if for whatever reason these WEBP files don't work, I have a leet hack right here that sometimes works. You can just type in JPEG, JPEG, and then hit use JPEG. Watch this. Beep boop beep boop bleep. Oh no. Okay. So this is a huge bummer. Um, I'll have to go back and research another photo. It looks like the file type of the WBEPs are not working adequately. So let me see if I can find either a JPEG, a PNG, or something like that. Yeah, this is a PNG, so this one will work. It's not as good as the other one, but I'm still pretty happy with it. So let me delete this file type, just throw that into your trash can down there, and we'll take this guy in and he will work. So I guess careful with the WEBP files. There's some kind of like web editor based file. All right, once your photo is in, same deal. Click, drag, expand it so that it fits the entire canvas, and then hit enter. You can move it around a little bit by clicking and holding and dragging and try to get it into a spot that you like. I think I like that a little bit better. Maybe I'll even, no, I don't like that mountain shown on the left side. So right there is pretty good. All right. Um, now that we have both of these in, we can go into some uh, layer management. Um, what we want to do is we want to make sure that our texture layer, this one, the 15 copy right now, we're going to do some layer renaming. We're going to move the texture layer above this and we're going to rename this postcard texture and then hit enter. To rename layers, it's the same as in Illustrator, double click it and you can type in the text. After you've named that postcard texture, we're going to, um, I want to change some settings on this. Um, let me double check what they are. I believe it's multiply. Let's make sure that that actually looks good. When you have the layer selected, you can tell because it's a light gray where it says normal right here. This is the layer setting. Click that. And I am looking for multiply. Yeah, there we go. If you scroll over multiply, it gives you a preview of what it does. Click that. And then with this, you could change the opacity if it's like too intense. I actually really liked it at 100% multiply, so I'm going to leave it there. Now, the background image right here. Let's rename that and do postcard background like that. This one here, I really recommend lowering the opacity. L opacity is essentially how transparent something is. If something is really high opacity or opaque it's not you you can't see through it but the lower the opacity the more you can see through it i'm gonna go with 48 but uh you could you could choose whatever you want you could manually type in the number two everybody everybody's photo is going to be different though <clears throat> but we really don't want this to like super stand out so try to get a lighter opacity or lower opacity in my opinion all right some border work though, and that's about it, and then we'll be done today. Um, we want to create what they call a layer mask on the postcard background. Layer masks are incredible, and I actually want to take some time to lecture about them real quick. So, select this layer, and if you look down here in the bottom, there's all these different layer settings. The one that I'm hovering over right now is Add Layer Mask. When you click that, you'll see this little white square appear in here. Layer masks are incredible, and they really make Photoshop a lot different than Sketchbook. I'm going to take the paintbrush tool right now to just kind of explain or showcase what they do. Don't worry about what brush I'm selecting at the moment. I'm just grabbing like kind of like a normal brush and taking a better brush size. I think I accidentally clicked as well. I'm going to bring that back. So when you have the layer mask selected, not the image, here I have the image selected. You can see because there's this little box around the layer right there. Here I have the layer mask selected and you can see because the box is now around the mask. Please take a look at the difference of these two right there and there. When the mask is selected, 
If you draw or do anything with the color black, I have black selected right now down here. White is my backup color. I have black selected. It will hide content. It looks like it's erasing it, right? But if I click this little switch button right here that brings white to the front and I draw back over it, it brings it back. Layer masks are like erasing but with no risk involved. You can just literally, instead of undoing it, you can just redraw over it. So what I'm getting at with this layer mask is we're going to kind of trim up the sides a little bit to make them look a little nicer, in my opinion. Um, I was going to have you do this with a different way, but I actually think this will be cooler and more organic to it. So let's, let's change this on the fly. Right now, I want everybody to select the brush tool. The brush tool is over here that I have, or you could alternatively just hit the letter B for brush. Then... I do think that the brush you use is important on this one, and I'll show you where your brush presets are. Up here, I have one that's a huge scale, 500 right now, but there's this little drop-down arrow. Click this, and you'll come up with a window. The folders might be collapsed. Um, I have some extra brushes that I'll be giving you later for other projects, but you'll definitely have general brushes, and that's all you really need for right now. Expand the general brushes folder, and I want you to find soft round, the very top left brush. Um, yours might be pretty big or pretty small by default. You can judge by this circle. Um, just like an illustrator, you can increase and decrease your brush size with the brackets, the left and right bracket that are to, to by the letter P key. The left bracket, if you hit it, will make your brush smaller. And the right bracket, bracket if you hit it, will make it bigger. I want to take a... Yeah, 500, honestly, I think is going to work really well for this. Um, and what you're going to do is leave your circle where it's like half over the canvas and half outside the canvas. And you don't have to have a straight line. This is why I think the more organic way is going to look cooler on this. Go ahead and just swipe, draw and swipe down on the sides where it's about half off, half on. If you don't like the job you did, you can always switch to the white color and bring it back. And this way, we have that kind of like torn, faded look. I actually think I'm going to switch to white. I want to bring a little back over there. I'm going to switch back to black. There we go. Cool. Yeah, that worked really be a lot better than the original thing I was going to show you guys. So, um, I love that. Perfect. All right, guys, we have our Photoshop file set up. Next class, we're going to be going in here and uh, doing the text and importing our Illustrator stuff into Photoshop. For now, let's go to File, Save As. Uh, we want to do Save to Your Computer. Please don't save to Cloud for right now. Save on your computer. Uh, hopefully, Desktop came up as the default Where option under this. If it didn't, you can click this drop-down arrow here and find Desktop. Maybe it might even be under your favorites called Desktop. Format should be Photoshop. Don't change that. And then save as, hopefully came up as first name, last name, postcard, dot, Photoshop document. If it didn't, go ahead and do that right now. Once you have that, hit save. After you do, this will pop up here. You can always, you always want to maximize compatibility, so then hit OK again. It'll save. Let me minimize Photoshop here just to double check. Yes, I have it. I have it right here. After this, you don't need this texture photo or the background one anymore, so I can take those and throw them into my trash can on my computer. I recommend cleaning out your trash can, by the way, so if you click and hold on it, you'll see empty trash. Go ahead and empty your trash can now. And then let's store both of these files in the top right of your desktop, your Illustrator one, .ai, and .psd. You guys are ready for the next class, so uh, guys, take care, hang in there, and I'll be back with the next video in a little bit.